In this video, we're going to consider the acceleration of a vector valued function determining our position, but which is not in a circular motion. Let's take a relatively simple example here and try to imagine what it would feel like to experience the motion of this curve here. Imagine we're in a taxi looking down from above. So this is a top view looking down on a map, X and Y. And what we have is our position defined by X is 100 T squared and Y is 10 T. So as our default for handling these kinds of scenarios, we would put in something like some representative time values and see what our position is. Let's stick with our traditional spanning zero by integers here as our initial time estimates and see what kind of graph we get. Our X value would be negative two is our t, so t squared is four, our x would be 400. And then our x would be 100, and then x would be zero. And then we'd actually get a repeat of those same values again as we square positive numbers this time and get the same final output. Our y's are simply 10 times the t's, so this would be negative 20, negative 10, zero, 10, and 20. So we see all the x's are positive as befits the t squared term, and if we divide this roughly into quarters, that'll be 400. This will not be to scale 10 and 20. What we'd have is this kind of parabola sideways, but scaled dramatically, and an arc that looks like this. From the sequence of time values, this is time negative two here. So we'd be moving up the curve and around like so. All right, so that defines the path of the taxi. So we start here, we're driving, we're driving, we're driving, and we're turning the entire time. And the question is, well, what does this feel like in the car? And the feel like in the car is a surrogate for force, which is a surrogate for acceleration in a constant mass problem like this. Let's figure out the acceleration. Well, we can't jump straight to that. We have to go through the first derivative before we can get to acceleration, but that's straightforward. The derivative of 100t squared is simply 200t, and the derivative of 10t is simply 10. So our acceleration, which is our double prime of t, is going to be the derivative of this, and that'll be 200 comma the derivative of 10 is just zero. Well, that's interesting. At time t equals zero, we actually get that same value because there's no t's left in our formula. So in fact, it's not about time zero. This acceleration is constant for all time. All right, well, that puts an interesting perspective on that. Let's go back to our diagram here for a moment. That means that at each point here, the acceleration is pointing to the right. Even at time zero, that point there, we have an acceleration towards the right. Working through the physics, the intuition there, we were moving left and up, but then the acceleration kept slowing down the left motion until eventually we stopped going left and then started going right. Now what we'd like to do is imagine how this feels in the car. So again, we have our trajectory here. The difference is now we imagine the car pointing along this axis, so we're actually driving in the direction of the velocity. Cars do not drive very well perpendicular to velocity or in other directions. So in the car, you would feel the acceleration in a different way at different instants, even though in the x, y directions, it's always pointing to the right. So let's freeze frame on time zero here for a moment. If we have a mass of 70 kilograms, if you are driving the car in this direction without any forces, you would simply keep going straight and you wouldn't feel any force on your back or your sides. However, at this instant here, you're going to have an acceleration of 200 meters per second squared. And that means that the force, which is mass times acceleration, is going to be 70 times 200. And this is a very, very fast. Keep in mind, this is like 10 Gs. So this is a very, very exciting taxi ride we're on. Uh, we get 14,000 uh, Newtons. And the way we'd experience that is our left shoulder is getting pushed to turn us around this corner to put us moving in this right direction instead of pure vertical in the XY plane. Now keep that image in mind 
working through that scenario as we're moving along a branch here. So as we start from time zero and keep going in this direction, imagine what it would feel like. How does the force change as the car moves along this path? Again, take a moment, maybe pause the video, and then we'll investigate further. Okay, so first off, it would not be this solution here, because remember, we have two different components happening here. We have our velocity vector, that's direction we're going in, and that frames the car position. And at the instant that we were talking about a second ago where the acceleration was there, yes, the door is going to push on us most strongly. However, later on, when the velocity is more in this direction, after a few seconds, then what we have is the acceleration is pushing us more a little bit from the left but also more from the back and so we get this idea of decomposing our acceleration into components we're not going to go too far into that in this class you'll get it in algebra and physics but you should be able to intuit that if we're moving in this direction and the acceleration is almost parallel to us then most of our acceleration is pushing us from the rear from the back and that's what leads us towards b we're going to have more and more force applied to us from the back driving us faster and faster in the positive x direction with a little nudge from the left hand door and it's because of the alignment between our acceleration and velocity vectors later on in time compared to the earlier moments where the velocity and acceleration were perpendicular to one another there's some interesting thought experiments you can work through with that kind of relationship but it does come back down to the mathematics of vectors